Hello, hi, welcome. Today we are again in the Funko Bunko, this time from a different angle. You can see my Han poster and maybe some different Funkos, I'm not sure. Possibly. So today is questions and answers day. Questions and answers with Jenny Penny. You ask the questions, I give the answers. <laughs> that works, right? The first day. Yeah. So, yeah, it's question and answer day. Um, I asked over in the community tab on YouTube um, some for you guys to ask me some questions. You guys were saying you didn't really know a lot about me, which I guess is true. I mean, you know my relationship status. You know I like toys and Han, but I guess you don't know that much about me specifically. So, let's, uh, let's do this. Oh, and if you want to see the community tab and all that jazz, you should add me. You should subscribe on YouTube so you can participate as well and get the notifications and all that stuff. Shameless plugging. Let's go! Here's a little intro until I get one professionally done. Like, comment, and subscribe to join in on the fun. So I will say, there's so many more questions that I even anticipated. Like, I really appreciate all the feedback. I never imagined all the questions that would be asked. So I'm gonna do my best to answer as many as possible. Um, hopefully I get this all done in one video. There's a possibility to be two parts, but we'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tackle this and get as many as done as I can. So first up, I've, <laughs> I've kind of divided it into categories for myself so I could figure out like what was asked and if there's duplicates and all that stuff and what you guys really want to know. So first up, we'll get to know me. So this will be about me and friends and family and yeah. So you'll see me referencing this, which is also a Star Wars notebook, of course. So first up, here we go. Tell us about your family. Any kids, siblings, pets? What state do you live in? Um, family. Uh, I don't have a lot of family. Both my parents have passed and their families pretty much have passed. My dad has a sister who is still around, which is good. Um, so her and my uncle and then some cousins. But aside from that, um, my parents have passed, my grandparents have passed. I have one sister who lives out of state. She is two years, almost two years younger than me, who I try to see as often as I can, but living in different states, it's kind of difficult. Um, I live in New York. I was raised in Buffalo, New York, right outside of Buffalo in a suburb, Cheektowaga. Um, there's Cheektowaga, Tonawanda, the Skajakwita Expressway, um, there's a lot. There, there's a whole bunch and someone even commented in the question saying that um, they can tell that I have a very distinct Western New York accent and that it gives them nostalgia for back home and their family and missing their family so that's sweet. Um, I didn't know my accent was prevalent to um, Western New York. I mean, I assumed I must have an accent and it must be from Western New York, but the fact that it can be identified as easily as it can makes me laugh. Speaking of that, I was also asked about <laughs> in living in New York, what my favorite part of living in New York is and pertaining to snowfall. Um, people asked if I've seen a Broadway show in New York City and I live in Rochester now which is about an hour, hour and a half from Buffalo. And it's in Western New York. So like think like Great Lakes, Niagara Falls area. Um, it's far from New York, not far, far, but like six to eight hours, depending, it's all the way across. So like I'm all the way over here and it's all the way over here. So I've actually never been to New York City. I need to go. 
<laughs> like that's definitely like close to like the height of the bucket list. So I'd love to see a Broadway show. Um, but another thing on the bucket list is leaving New York because a lot of it has to do with the snow. And I was asked about the snow and it's awful. Like it's bad. I feel like living here, you can spend maybe three months outside because the rest is cold and just not great. Like summers in Buffalo and I'll stick with Buffalo because I know Buffalo better. Rochester, I've just been here for like the past five to seven years, but I grew up in Buffalo. But Buffalo summers are fantastic. Like everyone's out, everyone's enjoying themselves. There's um, events on the Great Lakes, on Lake Erie in Buffalo, um, which is great. You can see Shark Girl, who, who I'm gonna post right here because I think everyone should see Shark Girl. And she's on the waterfront where they have concerts and events and that's definitely my favorite thing in Buffalo. But there's also not some great things, namely the snow. And um, I want to leave New York. So um, yeah, the snow's not great. That's enough to like get me to move south somewhere. Southwest, I don't know. I'm up here. So like literally every direction is south except like a few little states up here. So yeah let's let's see what the next question is next question who i'm looking at my notebook over here in case you're wondering why i'm drifting who is playing bass in the intro and outro that would be my friend kurt who is crazy when it comes to playing bass like he will listen to something and be able to play it like immediately i think it took him like no time at all to um write my intro and outro. I sang it for him in my super off-key singing and he immediately was able to match my off-key singing. Um, he's in a band with some friends called Trainwreck. It's a metal band for those of you who like metal. I'll put the link down here. Um, he's also able to make some bass stuff for you. So if you like that I'll put his contact info in the description. I'll also put the band info in the description if you need it then. So let's move on to the next category which is travel. Speaking of leaving New York, yeah, so we'll go to travel. It looks like a Scarlet has joined us for this portion. So hopefully, the chair isn't usually here, so hopefully she doesn't climb up. So you guys can let me know if she's misbehaving since I can only kind of see her in the screen here. So, tra oh, there she goes. Maybe she's not gonna misbehave after all. Travel, number one. If you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Um, I honestly haven't traveled a lot. I traveled with Jacob earlier this year and that's the most that I've traveled ever. But to be fair, that was more than I think most people travel. I left New York, I flew out for the first time since I was like three and when I was three I flew to Florida. I, th I may have even been younger than that. I may have been like two. I'm not sure. I went to Disney and to visit my grandparents when they were still alive in Florida and I don't remember a lot. I remember there was a snake in my grandmother's backyard. Um, I remember looking out the window on the plane and seeing clouds. But <laughs> I don't really, really remember any of Disney, which I think should probably be the highlight of this trip and not a snake in the backyard. So yeah, um, I need to travel. I traveled with Jacob earlier this year, like I said, I flew from New York to San Francisco with a layover in Chicago. And that's the first time I've flown as an adult, which was fine. Like I had a delay, which wasn't great, but, um, yeah, they, it was fine. It's kind of boring waiting around, but other than that, no problems. Uh, I flew to San Francisco and then we traveled north and drove to Washington and then east uh, back to Chicago. Yes, and then I flew home. Actually, I flew a little bit before Chicago. I'm trying to think where, but yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> so 
that West Coast trip was the most I've traveled besides for like Ohio, Pennsylvania, that little vicinity, Kentucky, I had driven there, um, and the one flight to Florida. Oh, and I went and visited Jacob earlier this year in North Carolina. So I saw all those states southward. So I need to travel in general. Um, I want to go to Las Vegas. I want to go to Florida and check out Orlando and Disney and all that stuff. I really want to see. Um, I call it Star Wars Land. I know that's <laughs> not what it's called. Galaxy's Edge. Um, I think that's what it's called. The Millennium Falcon. Um, yeah, I super want to see that. Um, I want to go to resorts and beaches and yeah, I've been to Canada though, since Canada's like directly north and like closer than most places. So another country is closer than most travel for me. So I have been to Canada. What countries would you like to visit is up next. Um, like I said, I've been to Canada. Um, I'd like to go to Mexico. That seems super fun. I'd like to go overseas. I think that would also be <laughs> super fun. Um, someone asked if I would specifically if I'd like to visit the UK and absolutely. Uh, I guess I'd pick London first. They asked what city. So I guess London first. Um, I've watched Doctor Who and a lot of British um, shows. So especially with Doctor Who based in London, I would like to see all of that in the Ferris wheel. And yeah, that's definitely on the bucket list. But yeah, I, I really enjoy travel. I've always wanted to travel. Even before I met Jacob, like the plan was to travel more. So that is definitely on the agenda. And last, uh, last was have you seen a Broadway show? Which we've established I have not. I haven't <laughs> even been to New York City. So I've decided that before I leave New York, which could happen, I, I don't know. But if I do, before I leave New York, I must go to New York City because I think it would be ridiculous if I spent my whole life in New York and have not been to New York City. And it's not that I don't want to go. It's hard to find people that want to go and it's a hard city to drive into. So I'd probably be better off flying and it'd have to be a whole thing. And I don't really know the city and how to do the subway. So I feel weird going there by myself. Like I feel like I'd get lost. So yeah, I already told Jacob that I really want to go to New York City and he said we would. So that'll happen at some point. <laughs> so on to the next category, which is toys. All right, here we go. On to toys. I don't know what this pose was. I guess it's the action pose for toys. <laughs> so one of the top questions that you guys asked was what my first Funko was. And the top question was uh, where Jacob and I met, which I will get to. But the second most was what was my first Funko. And that is this guy, this little Han. And uh, I learned someone, a bunch of people actually messaged me telling me to put my hand behind the things that I want to uh, show clear. So hopefully that worked. But yeah, this guy, uh, my sister bought him for me um, many Christmases ago. Uh, I'd say at least 10 years ago. I was going to look up to see when he came out. I don't remember. I know that's great information. This is a very informational channel. Maybe I'll look that up and like put that here and like here, here, somewhere. But yeah, this was my first one. Um, Han is definitely my thing. And when she got it, for me, him for me, I never thought that it would turn into this. <laughs> but the second one I bought was this little Batman 66 uh, penguin. And he's not a Funko, he's a Dorb. So I'm not sure if he counts, but I believe he was the second one. And it's funny because I remember like racking my brain to see if I should get him. I was at GameStop and I was buying a Wii U. So a big purchase, like that was fine. I was gonna get that. But then I was like, should I get him? Should I, I don't know, like $5. <laughs> but I eventually got him. And then following these two, I uh, went on Amazon and got, oh, you can see over my shoulder, like the rest of the line of these guys, like just in one shot, just like, <laughs> get it over with. Just get all them. And then there was really no, um, 
there wasn't as much deciding as I had over this guy. I was just like, okay, I guess I'm getting this guy now, and then it turned into this. So, I now have um, kind of a system of whether or not I'll buy a Funko. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a, fist, a system, but I have to have the, ooh, factor. Like, it has to, like, fill me with so much joy that I cannot not get it. Like, it, it has to be, it's like, ah! the ah factor so if it doesn't make me go ah inside <laughs> which I do a lot so it it's not a great system since I do odd a lot of things but that's the system I, it may have to be fine-tuned so I don't buy quite as many so on to the next question oh I just remembered I brought some runners-up for favorite Funko here so along with the penguin we have Batgirl and Robin, who took me forever to find their, um, their rare. Um, this also goes along with um, my rarest Funkos. I don't know if I have a lot of rare Funkos. Uh, it seems like at one point they were expensive, and then since then the gap is bridged and they're not quite as much. So these guys, who <laughs> I just remembered Batgirl is still wearing the AEW uh, title belt uh the female belt so she she's a she's a belt holder she's she's the champ <laughs> so these guys are up there um this loki because it took me quite a while to find a loki with a helmet like i was searching for such a long time and this one was announced not that long ago i believe he was an entertainment earth exclusive and i love him um a lot he was definitely the Loki of my dreams. And then we have Cubone, who is my favorite Pokemon. He's up there in my top. And Elton John. Um, another thing that I collect, people ask what I collect besides Funkos, is vinyl records. And I have this record um, in this outfit. And I love this so much that I actually purchased on Etsy this little 3D printed piano to go with him and I love it so much he's he's adorable I also have another Elton John I don't think I brought him upstairs um in the red white and blue sparkles he's super cute too and squirrel girl who has a squirrel I can't quite find the squirrel right this second but I swear she really does have a squirrel she has a squirrel she has a squirrel so yes, Squirrel Girl's up there, along with the Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein. And then, uh, we'll go with these two. Uh, Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite movies. I guess it would go more this way to get them to like be intertwined. But Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite movies. The scene is my favorite in the entire movie, um, especially when he gets the big snowball and piles it up and goes to throw it at her and it lands on his head. Like, definitely them falling in love is my favorite. So uh, when I saw these, like my heart melted. I love them. They are definitely towards the top. They may be my second favorite. It's hard to say. And then, last but not least, we have Sexy Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park, who I like has been, like, he's injured. It's injured Jeff Goldblum, but everyone has turned it into Sexy Jeff Goldblum because he is sexy. He is a sexy man, and this is a sexy pose. Um, I actually met him. Uh, I went to go see his jazz band, and my sister and I were walking to get an Uber and everyone was uh, behind the building waiting for him and I'm like oh let's go over there and we met him and it was great he was super nice he uh, met everyone and signed autographs and spoke with everyone super nice super gracious uh, didn't turn anyone away and he waited there and yeah that was definitely a highlight of my entire life <laughs> So let's move on to the next question. Is there a series or movie that you would like to see made into Funko form that hasn't yet? Um, first up, and 
I say this with reservation because I know I would spend a lot of money. <laughs> and that's AEW, All Elite Wrestling. Um, I have Kenny Omega and the Bucks. I'm trying to grab, there we go. The Bucks from the Ring of Honor series. But I would love to get the AEW guys. Um, that's another thing I collect is wrestling figures. My favorite figure is here somewhere on the table. One moment. Here we go. My favorite figure I have is Luke Harper, who is actually from Rochester and has passed away. And this is my favorite gear. Um, I'm excited for Bray Wyatt's return. I wish it could incorporate him somehow, but obviously it can't. Um, yeah, so I collect wrestling figures. I collect Star Wars Black Series. So let me go grab those. And I'm back. So I collect Star Wars Black Series. My sister actually just bought me this shelf, this Death Star that lights up, and I need to put them up. I haven't done a video with my Star Wars Black Series figures because they're still put away. I moved. I was going to say not too long ago, but it's been over six months. I think by the time I set up all the Funkos and everything, like, I'm lacking room. <laughs> so I've made a shelf for my Black Series, which I'm going to set up soon and film because I know you guys have wanted to see that. So here is my Leia, and since I've... Um, been slacking on figures they're just like in the box for now which I'm going to open like recently I just got this Leia and this Leia and this Leia <laughs> so if nothing else I'm definitely gonna have a Leia unboxing because that's quite the stack there and I have a bunch I'm I, I'm slacking I really need to put them out this may be my favorite line ever like little girl Jen would have loved these which leads me into the next question, which is, what were my favorite toys growing up? Um, I was really into My Little Pony. I was really into Care Bears, uh, Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake. Um, when I got a little older, I started getting into Ninja Turtles. And, oh, I was also really into Barbies. Um, yeah, I played all the time. And I had like my Jasmine doll and my Aladdin doll. Actually, I think it was my sister's Aladdin doll, but my Jasmine doll, like whichever. We played Barbies all the time together. <laughs> and a little later on, I got into Star Wars and started collecting the Power of the Force figures, which led me into the Black Series. Like those are incredible. Um, the smaller uh, 3.75 figures, those are nothing compared to the Black Series, and I've traded all of those in for my Black Series obsession. They're maybe my favorite line of toys ever, and when I heard about Indiana Jones coming out, I was hoping that they would be near the Black Series because they're just so great. I also collect cute Punisher figures. So, Frank Castle, like, look, look how cute he is. Look how happy, like, Frank Castle has no business looking this cute. Like, look how smiley he is. Like, Frank Castle is a tough dude. He will mess you up. So, if I can collect, like, cute, little, happy Punishers, I call him Mr. P. I don't know how this started. <laughs> but yeah, I call him Mr. P. And so, if I can collect little happy Mr. P's, I'm, I'm happy too. I'm also really into the 60s Batman, which I mentioned, and I collect those. Um, I have the Mattel figures. McFarlane has also released figures recently. I have those play sets, and I'm waiting on the villain play set, the villain's lair, which I'm crazy excited about. I think that'll be super fun. I have two shelves selected specifically for those, and I'm sure that video will be coming. Um, the McFarlane figures are also releasing all the villains. I, should, I don't know if I should say all the villains, but a lot of the villains, like Egghead's coming out, and King Tut, and Mr. Freeze, I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> but yeah, I'll have to get those. They're not going to be in scale with my Mattel guys, so I don't know if I should update. This is becoming a long rant about Batman figures. But yeah, I really love 
uh, the older Batman, and Adam West will always be my favorite Batman. Now another really popular, I just kicked the stand, I just kicked the tripod, hold on, okay, we're gonna fix this, there we go. <laughs> another really popular question I got was, why I take my Funkos out of the box. I think I've angered some people. I know there's a lot of people that collect Funkos in the box. I just prefer them out. I like being able to like hold them and have them out. And I mean, I also have so many that if I kept them in the box, I don't know if I'd have room to display them all. I would just look like I'm in a store, like <laughs> a giant Funko warehouse. So I definitely prefer them out of the box. Mr. Richard Gere here and um, yeah so I take them out of the box uh, I've also been asked about the Funkos losing value um, I don't really foresee myself selling them and by the time I'm no longer interested in them I will probably either be dead or it will the fad will be dead <laughs> a lot of death here <laughs> but yeah I feel like they'll either go the way of Beanie Babies or I just will, someone else will inherit them and it will be their issue to have all of these. <laughs> so I'm not really worried about taking them out of the box because look, you can play with them and like how would I have an intro with a dancing Funko if I didn't take them out of the box? Another question from um, someone in Brockport, which is not far from me, another suburb of Rochester was uh, what my favorite local Funko spots are. And um, I really like Estate Marketplace in Spencerport. It's like an antique type store, but they have separate vendors set up. And I really like going there. Um, Barter Town Collectibles has some. Um, I can find some loose ones there for a decent price. But um, a lot of them I find, I am either at like Target or GameStop because of exclusives so yeah it's kind of hard to find them in this area out in the wild but I guess I'd have to go with the state marketplace if um, I was trying to buy them locally and it's a great place uh, there was a meme of them and an advertisement from them like with all these brass instruments and it, it's hilarious <laughs> it's a great place the guys there are great and the final toy question is asking about Monster High figures, which I think they are so cute. Like, <laughs> I uh, filmed them in one of my recent videos, and I want them all. I want to hoard them. I want to put them somewhere. I think they're super, super cute. But I don't have room for them. I barely have room for the stuff I have. I need a bigger place. I think that's a common theme in this video, this Q&A video. I guess that's the answer to my questions is I need a bigger place because I'm running out of room for toys. <laughs> and now Jacob's bringing his toys. So, um, and that's another question is how stenchy and um, the 12 foot skeleton are doing. So we should go check in with them. How you doing, Mr. 12 foot skeleton? The people are curious how you doing. You okay? You need anything? You, you doing okay there? Watching out the window? You need some water? Or like, I guess that would go right through you. You okay? Okay. Oh, you, you stand guard. How you doing, Stenchy? You okay there? You doing okay? Greeting people as they walk in the door here? You need anything? You okay? You okay? Okay. He's okay. Scarlet, you like your brother? Scar Scarlet likes shadows. Scarlet. Let's see if I... Yeah. She likes shadows. She's more interested in that than a little stenchy there. <laughs> I really think the 12 foot skeleton and Stenchy were excited to be featured again. <laughs> they enjoy the camera time. They they like the spotlight, I think. They're yeah, that that's what they like. <laughs>
So let's go in to some other questions, which I'm actually categorizing as other because I don't know what else to put them under. So here we go. First up, favorite movie, TV shows, all that jazz. Favorite movies, um, obviously Star Wars. <laughs> Um, Indiana Jones, which kind of relates because of my love for Harrison Ford. Um, other than that, I would go with Pretty Woman and Mary Poppins, probably. They're, they're great. Next up, favorite YouTubers. Um, Jacob's alright. <laughs> I guess I have to say Jacob by default. Jacob's there. Um, I watch the Foosh with Robo. Um, that he's... I'd like to, uh, they asked, um, who I would like to collaborate with, and I mean, that's like, a, I'm just gonna say a stretch goal, like I'm talking in Hasbro terms, but yes, that's a stretch goal. <laughs> I also really like the Raccoon Whisperer, uh, he's this guy who lives in Canada and has all these raccoons that visit him, and he feeds, like, hot dogs and, like, vanilla cream sandwich cookies, and there's just swarms that come to see him, and he has these two cats. And it's super cute. And so, yes, those are the top YouTubers. <laughs> what is my favorite band? This is a hard question. I love music. My tastes range like crazy. Um, growing up, I didn't really get into my own like personal taste in music until... Uh, I want to say I was outside, out of high school. Like, in high school, I was listening to a lot of uh pop music i was really into like the backstreet boys and all that and the backstreet boys were one of my first concerts and i mean i still love the backstreet boys don't get me wrong but my taste have kind of evolved since then uh i really got into the killers and fleetwood mac and weezer um as my own green day too um got me into punk as like the mainstream guys that I like still cherish and uh, put at like the top of my list, like the ones I grew that first connection with. I just went to The Killers recently and it was incredible. Um, but aside from that, like I've grown into more like punk and rock, uh, some metal. Uh, the person who asked said that, uh, I think it's he, I'm not sure, loves Megadeth. And I mean, Megadeth is great. Um, I really like Anthrax, um, I'm into a lot of punk like Frank Turner and Social D, The Misfits, um, I know I'm going to leave some out, uh, I apologize, Against Me, I like Against Me a lot, um, Me First and the Gimme Gimmies, I listen to a lot of cover music, so I like them a lot. There's another person that, um, another cover artist that I've been listening to recently. I believe his name is Jordan Young. If I'm wrong, I'm going to put that here because I feel like he should get plugged because I've just gotten into him and his uh, covers are pretty great. I've also been asked if I'm into Elvis. So I have my little Elvis Funkos here. This one is the Diamond Collection and Glitters and here's Jailhouse Rock um, Elvis and what my favorite Elvis era is. And I guess I'd have to go with Jailhouse Rock. Um, I'm not sure what time frame that is, but yeah, I think this is my favorite Elvis. Um, yeah, I will go with Sexy Elvis. Just like I said, <laughs> Sexy Goldblum. We'll call him Sexy Elvis, the sexy era. But I mean, all Elvis is great. And I saw the new movie, and since then, I've really been into listening to his last concert and Unchained Melody and getting into that era more. So, I don't know. All Elvis is good Elvis, right? He's great. He's the king. <laughs> I've also been asked if I like Kiss and if I have any Kiss collectibles. And I have the band in Funko form. There's some other guys over here on this table that is beginning to overflow. Like, I packed stuff in a little bag and brought it upstairs for the video. Different figures I thought I would need and... The table's getting out of hand. So, here's the drummer. He has a drum kit over here. Here. And then, 
you can believe me that there's the two other members. So I do like Kiss and I've gotten into Kiss more recently. Uh, I say recently, but probably the past decade. Um, I've <laughs> really started to appreciate like their disco era. Like I was made for loving you and all that. So I definitely enjoy Kiss. Um, I've never seen Kiss, which I want to. That's a bucket list band for sure. I've seen Mini Kiss at the Bigfoot Festival with Jacob. And I've seen a cover band here that I believe is called Kiss This. I, I'm 99% sure that's the name. So they're from uh, the Western New York area and I saw them at a bar and they were super good. So now I just need to see the real Kiss. Do you play any games? Um, as far as board games, I have a whole stack in my closet and I think <laughs> I buy them and they sit there. So I like games in general. Um, I have a, why can't I, th Nintendo Switch. <laughs> called I almost called it the Wii U but I was talking about that before I have a Nintendo Switch and I've been really into the Kirby game that just came out I love Kirby I love Yoshi I'm really into um, Nintendo in general that's another thing I collect is the little Mario figures um, yeah so um, I grew up playing Nintendo Super Nintendo Atari and then kind of had a lapse my sister had a PS2 um, I wasn't really into games then. I played some computer games, um, like Sims and stuff, but I just got into games probably outside of high school, um, playing the PS2 myself, like, um, reintroduced to Mortal Kombat that I played for Super Nintendo, um, I like fighting games like that. I need to get a console of my own. I don't have one, so I'm thinking of getting a PS5 if I could get one. I uh, signed up for a waiting list and never heard anything. So I guess I'm just waiting. We'll see. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> what are your goals for the channel? Um, and that continues with, do you see any growth? Um, are you gonna do this casually? Um, people asked about Patreon. Um, people asked about my intro and outro, which I know I say that I'm going to get one until I get one professionally done. <laughs> um, people, oh no! The Papa just fell behind me. Oh no! Maybe he wants to come out and say hi. So, <laughs> anyways, back to the channel. Um, I am going to put in as much effort as I can, I guess. Um, I really like making the videos. I majored in graphic design in school, so I like making the thumbnails. That's all fun. Uh, so, I mean, I'd like it to go as far as it can, and if it doesn't and it just stays like this and it's more of a casual thing, that's good too. Um, I enjoy doing it. It's fun. So, I'm going to continue like it's a big deal. <laughs> like everyone in the world is watching and put as much effort in it as I can. But if it doesn't, like, it's out of my control. So, who knows? Um, and as far as Patreon, I just uh, signed up. And I have one tier, which is $3. And the link you can find below, I'll also put in the description. And it's going to include um, bonus content. I'm not sure what that will include yet. But we'll see. So, if you're interested and you want to see more content and you'd like to support the channel and make this go somewhere maybe um yeah you can sign up there and it'll be fun i as time goes on want to do some more tiers um for additional content um people also asked me if i'd be selling merch um he uh the person that asked he or she said that uh <laughs> they'd like to see a pin to accompany their carpet bagger pin, and I think that would be super cute. But I would have to um, front the cost of all of that, which I would love to do, but I need support. So I have the Patreon, and then um, just organically growing. We'll see where it goes, right, Wampa? Right? We're gonna we're gonna see. <laughs> now we're gonna do some like rapid fire questions until because I have I have a bunch here so I have to get through so I'm just gonna like read an answer so here we go let's see am I dressing up for Halloween um I have a video where I go to spirit and I bought a Freddy Krueger glove and so I have 
a shirt dress thing from Torrid and a hat and the glove that I bought at um, Spirit. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. I hope to go to a haunt with Jacob soon, so maybe I'll wear it there. Um, if plans go through with the haunt, like we keep trying and it keeps missing, so we'll see. Um, thoughts on snakes, spiders, and insects? I feel for snakes, I have to say snakes. Why do it have to be snakes? And the worst Harrison Ford impression, Indiana Jones impression ever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're not great. I'll, I'll tolerate them, like I'll hold a snake or a, like a tarantula or something. I don't like them in my space, but if they're they're doing their thing, that's fine. Um, as long as they're not like in my face, which I don't know why they'd want to be. That doesn't sound pleasant for them either. Have you met any wrestlers? Um, I've met Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen and DDP and Jake the Snake and Dan Housen and Ethan Page and Santana and Ortiz and kind of Ric Flair. I saw him at a convention. He was sitting there and I wanted to meet him, but the line was really long and it was expensive. And I've gotten more into Ric Flair recently, actually over like the pandemic, pandemic um, era. Was that, are we calling it an era now, I guess? But yeah, I really got into Ric Flair during the pandemic and watching all of his older matches and the Four Horsemen and I really wish I would have met him. So if I saw him at a convention now, I totally would love to meet him. So yeah, I met all of them. Um, pineapple on pizza, I've never had it. So I'm gonna say no, like I wouldn't order it on my own, but I would try it, we'll see. I don't see it being something that I order all the time. But, um, yeah. Um, do I have socks with characters? Of course I do. <laughs> have you met me? Of, of course. I need cute things. Um, who does my nails? I do my nails. They're by, I don't want to show a close up in case they're all weird. I mean, you see them a lot. They're there. <laughs> I actually just had to like cut them all down because they were breaking. But whatever. Anyways, um, I used to do Color Street, but they're kind of up there in price. So now I go through Lily and Fox. Um, they're little stickers. I brought them up whole, one moment. All right, yes, yeah, so I use nail decals through Lily and Fox. Um, my sister, when she was over um, last time, she uh, tried them out and she likes them a lot too. So there's some Halloween ones, like <laughs> here's some blood splatter. And then there's just like your regular decals and you put them on and file them down and I've gotten pretty good at it over however long I'm doing it. I feel like it's been years now. Maybe not years, plural, at least a year. But yeah, I love them. If you haven't noticed, they're like, I, I constantly. <laughs> like I'll be talking to Jacob on the phone. He'll be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing my nails. He's like, uh, yeah, of course you're doing your nails. <laughs> which, speaking of Jacob, brings us to the last category, which is Jacob! And the last category is Jacob. As I said, you saw the little banner. So here we go. Also, I wanted to add, I found Squirrel Girl, Squirrel. So she has her squirrel now, so she's happy. Happy Squirrel Girl. So the number one question when I asked was, how did you and Jacob meet? So, we'll go into story time story time with Jenny Penny baby or something like that. So, um, last, this past January, I emailed Jacob. Um, uh, my friend Brian introduced me to Jacob's channel, like, years ago. Like, I don't know when, I don't know the time frame, but he still had the intro with the suitcase. So, it was a decent amount of time, and he sent me the link to his channel saying I <laughs> I found your soulmate and sent me the link and I <laughs> binged his videos like yeah yeah it looks like you found my soulmate like <laughs> everything Jacob is into I'm into um just his personality and his weirdness um yeah we we click a lot oh but back to the story we have to rewind and go to the story so uh, in January, I emailed Jacob. Um, he had posted that he was going through a divorce and I was going through a breakup. So it was late and whatever. Um, he, uh, 
I was watching one of his videos and at the end he does his normal spiel. So I emailed him and was just like, hey, um, I watch you. I told him the soulmate story. Uh, told him that if he, oh, I told him I was going something through something similar as him and if he wanted to get back to me, then he should, not thinking he would ever respond. Um, I sent him some pictures of myself. Uh, I, I felt ridiculous emailing him. So he did respond, which I guess, spoiler alert, you um, realized. So <laughs> he responded and we started talking every day. Um, we really clicked. He um, then came and met me in March, I believe, early March. I think it was late February. So we were talking like every day for like two months, except for when he had his wisdom teeth pulled because he was a, he was a mess. <laughs> so yeah, we were talking every day and our first date was going to the Jello Museum which was super fun and then the next time we went to the Strong Museum while he was in Rochester and I actually have a picture I'm trying to get to my phone from there that was that is my favorite picture of the two of us if I could all right this isn't gonna work but I'll, I'll show it here for, for sure there let's see so this is at the Strong Museum, and we're both asking if the other person, we're asking the eight ball if the other person um, likes the other, you know, cutie stuff. <laughs> so both responses were like, yes, definitely, and those kind of eight ball things. So it, it was a good trip, and we weren't supposed to see each other for like another month after that. And I couldn't wait that long, and he was upset that he'd have to wait that long. So the next weekend, I drove to Maryland to see him, where he asked me to be his girlfriend. And it was official, and since then, we've been figuring this out with all the travel and stuff. So um, we talk every day, even if I don't see him, if he's traveling. And, I mean, obviously, I'd like to see him every day, but that can't happen that's just how it is so um we're making the best of everything how it has to be so some more questions surrounding jacob um future travel plans with jacob would you consider traveling with jacob full time as i kick the tripod again um i don't know if i travel with him full time we both have our own stuff um i work i that's another question that came up a lot i work in banking. I work in mortgage. Um, I work in quality control. I'm trying to simplify this <laughs> as much as possible. I work in mortgage and quality control. So I review the loans that other um, bankers present, other underwriters. So I'm a QC underwriter. So they complete the file, they complete the file, and then I review the file in order to confirm accuracy and make sure it's all good before we can send the loan package to closing so that the people can close on their house. Someone asked me, um, they said that I'm so happy and all this stuff and asked if my job was just as lovely and happy and energetic as I am and I'm like, it's banking, I mean it's kind of dry and boring. <laughs> So I like having the channel on the side and actually I was just laid off from that job so I'm looking again because the mortgage industry has taken a hit. So yeah, that's a whole thing. But anyways, traveling. Traveling with Jacob. Um, yes, we travel. Um, I don't know if it would end up being full time. Maybe, maybe like my channel could take off and I could do my thing while he's doing his thing and stuff like that. I don't know, we'll see. Um, a lot of it too, um, I work remote. So like the California trip, I was able to work on the West Coast while he did his thing during the day. And then afterwards I would either meet him places or stuff like that. So there's options for travel. So we'll see. Yeah, I do like traveling with him. It's, it's fun. Um, I also have autoimmune issues, so it's not always the easiest. Like right now I'm sitting here with a brace on my knee. So 
Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and blah, 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 behind the scenes, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> in answer to your question, yes, there will be travel, but if it's full time, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> will you be getting a pair of Crocs to match Jacob? Um, Jacob actually has a pair of red Crocs that I'm wearing right now that were too small for him that I stole. So, he does have red Crocs. They're his favorite. And I have a matching pair. So, yes. I stole his Crocs that were too small from him. So, we do have matching Crocs. <laughs> and I must say, when we both wear Crocs in public, I do feel kind of ridiculous. Like, I feel like we're the weird Croc couple or something. <laughs> and I had never worn Crocs before Jacob. And they're pretty comfy. He's on to something here. Like, they're pretty great. And lastly... Um, as far as the Jacob questions and all the questions, I guess, I guess that covers like the vast majority is what would you say to the camel that bit Jacob? <laughs> well, he's now a wear camel, which is nice, I guess. I mean, I think he enjoys his wear camel status. He, um, carries water well. He, um, does camely things. He spits a lot now. So, I mean, those are all a challenge, but um, I guess I would have told him like, hey, don't, <laughs> don't, don't bite him. He's nice. Look how cute he is. Look at his little face. Look, aw, don't, don't bite him. <laughs> so yes, I hope that answered your question. I, like, look how lovable he is. The cute little Jacob. Camel. <laughs> Bad camel. I've answered a lot of questions. I'm going delirious. So thank you for watching. I hope this, um, this, uh, helped you get to know me better. Um, don't forget about my Patreon on the bottom. And once again, I don't have an outro, which is the outro. And... I still need an outro. Maybe I can incorporate the Patreon stuff into the outro. So make sure to subscribe, make sure to comment, do all that jazz, and Patreon, and thanks. Bye.